Welcome back, everybody, to the NCAA Football 06 Montana State Bobcat Dynasty. MSU coming into today's game with a 7-3 and three record. It is our last home game of the season, and we're going to be hosting the Sacramento State Hornets. Derek Smith is putting together a spectacular junior season. Almost 3,000 yards, 32 touchdowns to just uh, 9 interceptions on the season so far. Connor Bray has been a solid running back. David Fry, over 1,000 yards and 12 touchdowns. One of the best receivers, if not the best, in the Big Sky Conference, at the very least statistically speaking. And then look at all those TFLs they have. They have a good number of sacks too. Sacramento State's really been balling out so far this season. And there's a little bit of pressure on MSU today. Sterling Johnson, a center, is going to be visiting us. We are currently number two on his list. So a big win today would be huge in uh, getting this center to commit as our current center, I believe, is going to be graduating after the season. If not, the year after that. And then Johnson, he can just, uh, we can just redshirt this new guy. But first, you know, we've got to get him to commit and we've got to put together a big game. Montana State did break their losing streak last week after uh, Idaho and Eastern Washington upset them in back-to-back -back games. Now Sacramento State comes in here to try to pull off another upset against MSU. They're getting the football to start off this game. Smith to the right side. He's got Franklin. A beautiful throw right over Brett Garrett. That's going to get him out to the 22-yard line. Faking the toss, and Peters has the reception, and he gets out across the 10-yard line. Na nice catch and run by the freshman. Goal to go for the Hornets. Derek Smith fires to the end zone, and the pass is going to be dropped by David Fry. Very uncharacteristic of him. Smith looking to throw again, firing left side, and Max Lloyd knocks that pass away. Can Montana State hold on third down? Smith to the end zone, tipped away by Eddie Fine. Great goal line stand there by Montana State. That's going to force them to attempt this field goal, which is up and good. They're up 3-0. Here's Vince Robinson running this one to the left side. Montana State does have Kevin Fuller back from injury, but the ground game has been working pretty good, especially last week against uh, Portland State. So we're going to try to keep that going today. And Fuller, he can keep us on the ground. Nice run there as the mobile quarterback gets us out to the 48-yard line. Up the gut is Vince Robinson, and that's going to get us into Sacramento State territory. We're going to give it to Robinson again. He cuts it to the right. Not a huge gain, but he does have a first down. At the 38-yard line now, dropping back to throw is Fuller. Moving to his right, he's got Key, the backup tight end. And that's going to be about five yards for the Bobcats. Play fake now. Fuller going for it all, and this is going to sail out of the back of the end zone as he was looking for Aaron Martin. Looking for the third down conversion now. Fuller under a little bit of duress. He's going to try to run for it, and he's not going to get it. Offense stays on the field for fourth down. Fuller wants to throw pressure, gets the pass off, just for it to be picked off by Mason. He's across the 50, and there is not a single Bobcat near him. High stepping into the end zone for six. Another pick six thrown by MSU. We've thrown at least four of those this season. I think actually more than four. I mean, he had, it was almost a good idea to throw it to Robinson in the flat, but uh, the pressure, plus it just wasn't really a good read to begin with. And unfortunately, we do more than just fail on fourth down. We throw a pick six and we got to restart this whole drive. And guess what? We're down 10 nothing now. Direct snap to Vince Robinson, and that's not going to work for MSU at all. He lost all that yards that we gained on first down. Now looking for the third down conversion. Fuller, he has time, fires downfield, and he's going to be picked off again. Thomas on the return already in Bobcat territory. Almost gets it to the, where the first down marker was. And yep, Fuller kind of just hoping that Larry Lane or whoever his intended receiver was there was going to come back to the football. And he didn't. Just poor, poor communication there by MSU. And now they're in a pretty bad position. They could possibly be down 17 to nothing by the end of the first quarter. Smith under some pressure escapes from Mario Harris, but Jimmy Kent's going to bring him down. Second and 15 after the sack. Smith has time, fires this one to the left. Jackson goes up and brings this one down, and they're going to be a little bit shy of the sticks. 
Third and three to play fake. Derek Smith throws to the end zone, but Travis Kraft breaks that pass up, and that will be the second to last play of the quarter. Last play of the quarter is going to be another field goal attempt, which makes it a 13-point game. Okay, that was just one bad quarter of football out of the way. Let's play some good football in this next quarter. That's a nice way to start it off by Vince Robinson spinning off a of defender's five carries for 40 yards. Robinson breaking this one to the right side. Another nice run. The impact player has to chase him down. He's having a really good day on the ground so far. Why not keep giving it to him? Because we got a play fake on our hands now. If we can run the football well, play action should, in theory, work good, but it didn't really there. Fuller's going to run this one himself. Brought down after he has about eight. Looking at another third down. Play fake. Fuller rolling to his right. He could throw it to Washington, but he's going to take the sure thing and use his legs, converting the third down. So now we're in their territory. Manigat with the carry. Gets brought down in the backfield, but by the face mask. So it's actually a good thing for Montana State. Instead of third and 11, it's second and six. Fuller under some more duress, rolling to his left. He tried throwing it at the last second, but that's real tough to do when you're right-handed, rolling to your left under pressure like that. Very tough to get rid of the football there. And so now Sacramento State is going to take back over. Throw to the left side is going to be incomplete, but they're going to call pass interference. I don't know about that, but they're going to get Kevin Ortz. So a quick set of downs now for... Uh, Sacramento State, Smith under some pressure, fires downfield, and he's picked off by Brett Garrett. The only time I'm actually happy that we missed getting the sack there as Max Lloyd was real close to getting to him. Great pocket presence from Derek Smith, but a bad underthrow gets picked off. Montana State still looking to get on the board. And that turnover is going to really help us get some good field position, but Vince Robinson's run there is not going to help us as he loses three. Kevin Fuller now moving to Hazel right, stopping and firing back downfield. Lane goes up and he has it inside of the red zone. Big play there by MSU. I think that's only the second completion that Kevin Fuller has had all game today. Now at the 14-yard line, inside of two minutes, Robinson loses the football and Sacramento State scoops it up. And I guess it's just one of those games where we would, even if we do something right, the very next play, it's going to go wrong. Something terrible like that's going to happen. And now the Hornets looking to extend their lead. Pass over the middle is going to be caught by David Fry. That's going to get them some nice breathing room. A minute and a half left to go in the quarter under pressure, but he gets it out to Fry. He sheds a tackle and gets in the MSU territory. Gets away from Garrett. What a catch and run by David Fry. Two broken tackles. And Sacramento State is now going to be up 20 to nothing here. Great job. Great pocket presence by Derek Smith there. Poor tackling by Montana State. And the rest there was history. All right, Fuller, you got to get us on the board before the end of the half. Otherwise, I don't know what's going to happen with you. I'm getting kind of frustrated with our freshman quarterback so far. Nice throw to Ben Collins. That does get us out to the 50. Robinson's going to bounce this one out to the outside, trying to keep the defense honest. And he has a gain of six. Robinson definitely has been slowing down since his first big quarter today. Fuller rolling to his left, fires off his back foot. He's got Paul Washington over the middle. Great pass. That's going to get us out just shy of the red zone now. Fuller takes the snap, fires left side, and he's got Paul Washington for a touchdown. I don't even think he expected to get into the end zone on that play there, but the defender took a bad angle to try to break that pass up. Montana State finally on the board. Fields kicking us off now as... Uh, we draw to the end of the second quarter. Swanson's going to return, but he's going to get laid out. Loses the football. Anthony Ross scoops it up at the 20. And now Montana State has all the momentum going their way as we finally catch a break. Oh, man. Right off the hands of Larry Lane there. That easily should have set up goal to go. Instead, we're going to be faced with third down. Under some pressure, and now just a bad throw there by Kevin Fuller. Should have had Washington for a first down, maybe even a touchdown. Instead, we'll just have to get uh, to settle for a Gabriel Fields field goal. But you know what? I'm going to take three free points. 
Only 13 seconds left to go in the quarter now. They're going to give the football to Bray, and he's going to break this one across the 50. Montana State giving chance, and they're not going to get him. Are you kidding me? They were just trying to run the clock out. Instead, they run up the score just before halftime. 77 yards there by the running back, Connor Bray, and it's a 17-point game at the half. Kevin Fuller airing this one out deep to begin the third quarter. Larry Lane can't haul it in. Faced with an early third down pretty deep on our own territory. Fuller's going to fire this one downfield. What a catch by Curtis Brown across the 45-yard line. Fuller takes the snap. Floats this one to the left for Lane. And this time he's got it inside of the red zone already. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. There's a reason he's an impact player. And there's a reason that Fuller isn't right now. Terrible turnover as he threw it off his back foot. He had Vince Robinson open, but since he threw it off his back foot, it was kind of just a wacky pass. And it gets picked off. I guess what the bright side is that they get pinned back in their own territory pretty far, but Connor Bray's going to change that real fast, just shy of their own 20-yard line now. That's only their starting running back second carry of the game, believe it or not. That pass is going to fall incomplete, meaning it's going to be third down and 11. They come out in the offset eye. The pass is going to be broken up, and Montana State's defense finally gets them a stop. Kevin Fuller trying to get the Bobcats back into this game now. He's going to run this one down the right sideline. He has a first down before he steps out of bounds into Sacramento State territory already. Now Robinson takes it right off the gut, and that's going to be about nine more yards for him. He's kind of slowed down today, but you know what? He's still playing pretty decent. How about another big run there by Vince Robinson? 2,600 yards so far as a Bobcat throughout his career. Fuller fires this one left side. Nice passing catch to Larry Lane. Goal to go for Montana State. Let's not squander it this time. Fuller throws this one in the flat, and you've got to be kidding me. Mason with the interception, the fourth pick of Fuller so far today. And I don't even know if this one was on Fuller as much as it was on Ben Collins. He was throwing it to him. It kind of just went right through his hands. Gets picked off. Once again, Sacramento State is pinned back pretty far in their own territory. And this time, we're able to capitalize on it. Max Lloyd with the safety there. And that will cut this deficit down just by the slightest bit. So now Weber comes out with the free kick. Looks like Curtis Brown's going to return it from his own 30. He gets some solid blocking here. Gets across the 50-yard line. Big time return. And we're going to start out in their territory. And we have a change at quarterback now. Lee Mullins in the game. He played pretty good last week, but that was only with 10 pass attempts. The run game really did carry him. We'll have to see if he can lead MSU to a comeback today. Nice pickup of nine on that play. And then they're just going to give us the free third down conversion with the encroachment penalty. Mullins taking the snap looking to throw. Firing right side. He's got Curtis Brown inside of the 10. It's already goal to go. Less than a minute to go in the third quarter. Mullins fires over the middle. He had Collins open but was just off the mark. Third and goal, Mullins fires to the end zone, and Larry Lane intended for him would have been a tough catch to make, and it falls incomplete, meaning Gabriel Fields is going to come out for another field goal attempt, which is up and good. Well, that's going to cut the deficit down even more. It's going to be a 12-point game. Pass to the left is going to be caught and already in MSU territory. Man, our defense has been really struggling today. Smith with the snap steps up in the pocket. Franklin comes back for it, and he's inside of the red zone. Eight hurries for Montana State, three sacks and one interception. So looking at those stats, it's not so bad, but we don't have a very many stops on third down, and we have a tough time keeping them out of the end zone. Kyle Franklin with the score, and that's going to extend their lead even more as we come to the end of the third quarter. What does Lee Mullins have in store for us? Nice throw over the middle. Paul Washington brings that one in. And that will be a pretty good game. Second and 12. Mullins pressured. Sacked. Loses the football. Pope is going to recover it. So we will maintain possession. But a huge loss on second down. Third and long. Mullins looking to air it out. Flush to his right. Stopping and firing downfield. Looking for Washington. 
Fourth down and 21. Mullins looking to throw, keeping Montana State in the game. And he's got Washington this time. What a throw right on the money between a ton of defenders. Mullins just it gets it right in the bucket. And then a quick throw there, and Washington's going to drop the easy one. Third down and 10. We're going to go five wide over the middle. Tipped twice and then caught by Aaron Martin. How about a little bit of luck going Montana State's way there as that's going to get us all the way out to the 11. Mullins now firing to the end zone. A pretty tight window, but it's going to be caught by Curtis Brown. And I don't know what this is. His statistics or his attributes are not as good as Kevin Fuller, but for whatever reason, he just seems to make those tight throws a little bit better. Here's third down for Sacramento State. They're going to convert and get way more than they needed. Fry gets all the way out to about the 22 or 23 yard line. Once again, we have a chance to get a stop. Fire into the end zone, too high and incomplete. So now it's going to be a 38 yard field goal attempt to make the game just a little bit more out of reach for us as we only have a minute and a 26 seconds left to go in the game. But you know what? We're not going to give up. Nice throw down to Larry Lane. He's across the 40, the 30, the 20. It's going to be a one play drive for the Bobcats. Another beautiful throw by Mullins. 81 yards. And we're going to go for two. Mullins tried going for two, or maybe it wasn't, it was a game or two ago when we tried going for two. It really didn't work for us, and it's not going to work for us here either as Mullins just had to try something, and it doesn't work at all. Now attempting the onside kick, and Sacramento State's going to recover it, and they're up by 11. All they need to do is pick up a first down, and this game is over. Give it to the fullback, and he's going to gash the defense. At least he didn't take it for six. Goal to go for Sacramento State again. Luckily, they do have mercy on us, and they're not going to run up the score. But that is our fourth loss in, what, five games? No, it's our third loss in four games is what it is. And we've just really been on a cold streak recently. We did definitely play better with Lee Mullins in the game. And we might have a little bit of a quarterback controversy going into the Brawl of the Wild next week against the Grizzlies. I mean, look, even looking at the stats, Mullins didn't even play over half the game. Kevin Fuller played, you know, the first half and then like half of the third quarter. Had less yards and four picks. Lee Mullins played a lot better, which I don't even know why I play better with him because like almost every attribute of his is, is lower. His throw power, his throw accuracy, his awareness, his speed, like everything is lower, but he just plays better. I don't know what it is. And then of course the defense, they really did struggle. They had a tough time tackling and a tough time getting stops. Despite the poor play, Terrence Williams, who was not visiting us today, he still decided to commit. So that's two commits on the season for us so far. NAU is going to lose this one to Northern Illinois, which is fantastic news for us. NAU, I think, still is a little bit better than we are, especially in conference play. Weber State's also going to be losing their game this week. And uh, luckily, the Grizzlies also lose. Portland State defeats them pretty good. And then Eastern Washington put up 27 points in the fourth quarter just to lose by one. And that's going to do it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, leaving a like would be awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, this has been Jeffrey reminding you to stay moist.